welcome back to my channel so i'm bringing the whole show outside i'll be cutting my fabric outside because it's more spacious outside than inside the house so yeah so i want to make a kimono jacket i saw this design online so i said this i like the design so hopefully i'm going to recreate the look so i got these two fabrics just like the design but it's more thicker i think it's more thicker than the fabric they use for the design. The reason is I'll be traveling out very soon, so I needed something that'll be thick, warm, and pre to prevent me from cutting cold. So I think this fabric is ideal to create the kimono jacket. So I'll be, so yeah, this is the kimono jacket. I don't need, a, I don't need a pattern to create this look. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draw like an illustration of how I will normally create the jacket using my using the the um the measurement I'm gonna use for this is a one size fit all so there's no particular like measurement to this but I am going to cut my fabric here down here and I'm gonna show you the process of cutting it but I am gonna put like the illustration for you to also see and if you want to create this loop so it's easy for you to like draft your pattern and create this loop so yeah before leaving please don't forget to subscribe to my channel like share my video comment if you want me to explain something in depth you just comment and i'll do that for you so yeah by the way if you want to make this i have a video on how i create this loop i'm wearing this like now it's it has turned to my house clothes because I've worn it like so many times. <laughs> So I laid down a black and a white cloth to enable me cut my fabric. So I started cut um I started my measurement from the neck. So don't forget that the fabric has to be in fold to cut it because I'm cutting in quarter but my fabric is in fold. So that means I'm cutting the first part. So I started by cutting the back of the um kimono jacket. So the neck I the measurements you can check the illustration for the measurements so i don't have to like um call out the measurements here so i cut out the neck so i'm cutting the back like i said so i'm cut out the neck created the shape then the sleeve of the jacket i measured the sleeve of the jacket then after measuring the sleeve of the jacket i went ahead to like I measured the um, the slant, the shoulder slant. So yeah, so I had to like document some of the things I did not put when planning out my cutting. So I just had to like keep updating my book. So I went ahead to like measure the length of the jacket and cut that so I can get like I can. Like get the shape of what I want to do. So now I started cutting out the neck, the sleeve. Then I also measured the armhole opening. That's the sleeve opening. Then I also I had to pin all the way down just to get that curve, the the sleeve curve all the way to the uh, main jacket. So I, I hope you understand that part. So after getting that, you can see I'm documenting everything that I left out. So I had to like cut the whole shape. So cutting the first one, then I had to fold to get the front because the front takes more um, time. So I had to like do more things to the front. Not, it didn't take time. I just do, did something. So I cut out the shape of the back the front then i just at the neck of the back I, I added more length to the back neck then i marked out the black i marked out the six inches to create my black detailing so yeah i got my black fabric to cut out the six inches from the neck side down from the front part and i left like similar ones in front and at the side too for joining so i cut another piece of that same front because i'll be using two in, because i'll be sewing here i started by sewing the front black pieces first i sewed close the neck i cut my fabric as a whole 
so I didn't have to like sew the center front before sewing the neck so all I needed to do was to sew the neck so after sewing the neck I did um, a top stitch then I trimmed and turned over Next, I aligned the black front pieces to the green front pieces, right side together, then pin and sew. I try to overlock as I sew. I sometimes I lock first before sewing. Next, I cut a neck facing for the back piece, then sew. I locked the bottom of the neck face and before attaching it to the back face. I also did a top stitch to keep the neck facing in place. After sewing the neck facing, I went ahead to attach the two pieces together. That's the front pieces and the back piece together by the sleeve and the side, just like this. I just pinned them up together and sew, then lock. This is me showing you what I have done so far. So the next thing to do was to hem the sleeves. I folded the sleeves by 1.5 inches and so. So this is a one size fits all. It can fit um, small, large, medium, extra large extra extra large so if you're interested you can get the illustration or i will post it on my facebook group i'll put the link after posting it in the description box next it's time to sew the 
flare and attach so for the black piece i couldn't cut it as a whole so i had to close one end um sew it closed then lock with a zigzag stitch but the green i cut it as a whole so there's no need closing one end of the green fabric so after sewing this what i did next was to um, fold twice the second end of the black flare pieces then sew what I did for the black I also did the same thing for the green by double folding the ends then after double folding the ends I hemmed the bottom I also hemmed the bottom of the black piece. What I did for the black, I also did for the green. Next, I attached the black and the green flare fabric together and pin at the top to enable me to um, create the gathering effect at the top of the two pieces. After attaching the two flare pieces together, I adjusted my stitch length to 4, then ran a basic stitch at the top to enable me to create that gathering effect at the top. So I have done this so many times in all, most of my videos, yeah, I have done this gathering in most of my videos. So what I did after running a basic stitch, I just dragged just to create that effect. So next thing is to create the taping to create that tape at the bottom before attaching the flare so i did everything at once i didn't want to sew the tape first then sew the the flare attach the flare to the top of the piece so this is easy to attach what i did was to place the tape first inward facing inward the top then place the flare also facing inward but right sides together so then I paint all the way around then so So this kimono jacket is an abaya, abaya yes. So it's very easy to make, straightforward. There's only creating a pattern, but you can just follow the illustration to like get this look. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the thumbs up button and click on the subscribe button. Thank you. Bye.